A-Watch fans, and we're back to talk about two major topics. One is the tsunami of Rolex about to hit the market, which is going to cause prices to collapse. And also, you know, quick update on the Rolex Yachtmaster, why I believe this is the absolute best watch that Rolex makes, uh, where the prices are at, where I believe they're heading, and maybe a couple of other topics. Now, uh, first, first, uh, I'll, I'll address this watch, and then it will go into the tsunami of pri- of of supply, the tsunami of supply that's going to be coming from the new, the new Rolex uh, factories uh, that is going to totally collapse the market in the coming months. Uh, but first, you know, the Yachtmaster, this is the Yachtmaster 40. This is the, uh, you know, I think this is a 2019 model. Uh, as you can see, this is a close-up video, so you can kind of see there's got uh, you know, quite a few scratches. You can't really notice it, you know, if you're, you know, from like about a foot away if you're just wearing the watch normally. But uh, this light, this video picks up everything. And uh, yes, this will get scratched. So a couple things. Why do I believe this is the absolute best uh, Rolex model out there. Um, two reasons. One is, uh, you actually, you know, obviously, look, it's got nice design. Again, in my opinion, uh, it's got a very useful complication, which is this timing mechanism. Uh, again, it's the, 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 the bezel, you, you move it and you can basically time things. Uh, I, and now in my opinion, a complication is actually useful if you're using it, let's call it, uh, twice a week. If you're using something twice a week or more, then it actually it, it means it's doing something. Now I use this to time stuff all the time. Whether I don't know, it's a parking spot, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm cooking pasta, whatever it is. I'm I'm on a call, you know, with somebody. I want to know, you know, uh, how long uh, it is. Uh, let's say, you know, I'm I'm in my you know male uh, escort job, and you know, I want to know, uh, you know, how much time I should be. Uh, you know, you know, it's an hour, so I want to make sure that you know I'm not going beyond an hour, right? So it's very, uh, it's very useful. Uh, this this complication. Now, some of you are saying, well, I can get that with a Submariner. Well, here's the thing: a Submariner is basically again. Let me let me just pull this up a little bit. So okay, you can kind of see. Uh, you'll notice the case. Let me just pull this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, the case. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, it's a much more refined case, much more refined case, bracelet, everything, than the Submariner. By the way, when I'm talking about Yacht Masters, I'm talking about the new generation, not the ones from like, you know, 15 years ago. You want to get the ones, obviously, with that new clasp, you know, the, the stuff that the last made in the last five years. Um, now... Again, uh, Submariner is kind of, it's an ugly watch. It really is a very basic watch. And, you know, the problem is, you know, all the sheeple, that's right, all the sheeple, everybody thinks, oh, I got to get a Rolex. I got to get a Rolex. Uh, I need a tool watch. I'm going to go diving. Yeah. Let me tell you something. How many guys go diving in that watch? How many? <laughs> if you go diving with that watch, it's the number is like, I don't know, it's a 0.0001%. Now, again, this bezel turns both directions very easy to move the submariner uh bezel for timing it only goes one direction you need directional and it's much more difficult to move because it's meant to be used underwater and go one way for safety purposes okay and uh it's just not real i mean it's not that practical um again the submariner my opinion it's an ugly watch it's basically a tool watch now again uh not to sound like a snob but um look the yacht master is for the guy that owns the yacht right and the Submariner is for the diver that comes in once a month to scrape the, um, you know, the uh, stuff from the bottom of the boat. The, uh, what is it, the plankton or whatever it is, I forgot. I, I remember I had to have a guy come in like every two, three weeks to scrape the bottom of my boat. Well, I was wearing the Yacht Master and he was wearing, uh, I don't know if they were wearing a Submariner, but those guys were getting paid well. I think it would cost me about, how much did it cost me? I forgot, but uh, listen, I'm glad I sold the boat. Um Okay, so um, Yacht Master again. Now you're thinking, okay, what about the Daytona? Well, the Daytona, you know, eh, what, what do you need to split? You know, you got to time something to the second. It, it, it's ridic- It's a ridiculous. It's a ridiculous watch. How many people actually? Let's look at the colors. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed, guys. Why do I have the brown dial? Well, because you got the brown. You got a bronze exterior, and you got the. Okay, you see this nice brown here? That's right. I'm a fan of the brown. Um, I don't know if you can see this. There we go. There we go, my friends. You see how 
you see, there we go. Tobacco, Havana Brown, um, chocolate, whatever you want to call it. Look, the Daytona is absolutely not practical for timing. Nobody uses those functions. Zero people. I, everybody I know who's ha who has a chronograph never uses it. It's just they think it looks cool. I mean, that, that is the most immature. I mean, that's like such a childish thing to, to get, you know, a function that you don't use. Again, I believe form follows function. Uh, I'm not going to wear a watch unless I'm using the function. So if I'm using a, uh, a perpetual, you know, perpetual calendar, yeah, I, I want to know the date time, you know, the, the day, date, all that stuff. The moon phase, yes, I do want to know the moon phase. Uh, it is important to me. And um, if I'm using a dual time, okay, a real dual time, which has two, two dials, uh, that is very useful to me when I travel. I don't believe in the Rolex GMT. I think it's a garbage watch. Again, it's also ugly case. It's not refined. Again, this very refined case, very similar to the uh, to the uh, Daytona, actually. Uh, again, I believe this is the best watch in the lineup. Now, uh, other than that, you might get the uh, Perpetual 41, uh, the Oyster 41, Oyster Perpetual, I think they call it. Yeah, the 41. Very nice watch. Uh, I think the 41 is actually very nice. Uh, for me, again, 40, it's hard. I got a small wrist. And I, on this video, it actually looks, watch looks bigger than it is. But it, it's this is the maximum I could do. I really can't go beyond this here. Um, now, again, um, where are prices at? Okay, so I, I bought this watch for about 11 grand, 11.5, I think it was. You know, right in the early days of COVID in uh, 2020, and uh, I think the retail on this is, I don't know, was it 15, whatever? But look, uh, you always get these watches at a discount, right? And I'm going to tell you where prices are going. But how much should you be paying for this watch? I believe for the two-tone retail, I believe, is about 16, maybe 15.9 or something like that. The blue dial, which I think is the watch to get, not this one, not this one. Uh, I wear this for a specific reason. But the blue dial, I might actually get a blue dial if prices come down, which I believe they will. Blue dial is uh, thirteen grand, I believe. Thirteen nine. Uh, how much should you be paying? Uh, do not, and I again, do not. Uh, you know, do not pay for this watch for the two tone rose gold, ever rose, whatever they call. It. Do not pay more than thirteen grand for this watch. I wouldn't even pay more than twelve grand, and I believe prices will hit twelve grand for this model in uh, April. March, April, and again, I'm talking about slider condition. Use the slider condition, all right? Um, even the boutique, maybe you should just go to Rolex, and you know, I would, I would ask for a discount right off the bat. I, I would not pay retail for this watch. Not, absolutely not. I would absolutely be demanding a discount. Now, um, what about the blue, the blue one, the blue dial? Uh, that one. I think ten grand is the price, the correct price, eleven maximum. And um, those were going for about nine grand around COVID time or before that. Again, Rolex normally sells at a discount. Now I'm going to tell you where price is going to be going, my friends, and they, they are going a lot, 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 lot lower. Okay, they're going a lot lower now. Um, what do I think is the upside potential for this watch? You know what? Look, I think if you can get this at twelve grand or whatever the number is, you know, you're, you're safe. You're going to be, um, you know, you're going to basically, you know, you'll make a couple percent a year if you hold it for 10 years or whatever it is, right? You're, you're, your money's going to be safe in this watch, right? I, that's what I believe, especially the blue dial. Uh, what about the gray dial or whatever they call it? They, call, they have some other name for it. I, I think that's an ugly watch. I, I, actually, I shouldn't say ugly, but it's like the gray dial is just it's lifeless. It's really for dull people. It's for people who kind of like, again, it's it's the gray dollars for the guy who normally would get a Submariner or the guy who's got like really no taste. Um, you know, it's just somebody who's very dull who wants to fit in or whatever. You know, it's like that drunken Irishman who lives in uh, Venice. I think that's what he has. He's got the, the gray doll and he, you know, he thinks that's great. But again, that guy's, you know, that guy really has no taste. Again, who, who else buys a Sea Dweller? I mean, that's like the dumbest watch unless you're going to be you know legitimately going on deep sea dives deep deep sea dives and even then you'd wear a different watch i mean it's a stupid watch um okay what's going on with with rolex uh okay my nephew kino tells me that um the new factory that they have fully automated they got robots they got little chinese kids in there doing the finishing work like they got 11 year old chinese kids 
Uh, and by the way, a lot of these Rolex parts are actually uh, made in China. This is the fact. This is the fact that they're not going to tell you. Now, my nephew Kino has told me this. How does he know? Well, he knows, right? Again, if the watch is finished in Switzerland, it's a Swiss watch, right? But a lot of these parts are made in China. Um, anyway, they got they got the new plant. They got a billion dollars sunk into this or more. Uh, they gotta they gotta be cranking it up. Uh, don't believe the sketch about uh, you know the supply is limited. The you know the, the display models, all that stuff. It's a fugazi, all right. Price is gonna be dropping. How much? Um, all Rolexes will be selling at a discount by March, April. Uh, again, these models, the two-tone models, 30% off retail. Easy. Um, Daytona's, look, Daytona's, there's always there's always morons who, who think that Daytona's great. That's, I mean, I, I, for, for as long as I can remember, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit over 18, but as long as I can remember, the Daytona has always been hard to get. It's always sold at a premium um, and because, you know, people are stupid, right? They, 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 they think they're, they, you know, a guy buys a Daytona, he thinks he's like, uh, you know, Paul Newman driving a Ferrari or something. You know, it's, it's really dumb people. Now, um, back to the, um, back to, uh, prices again, uh, all Rolex models will be collapsing at least 30% for new models. Okay. There's going to be a tsunami hitting the market in the next couple of months. You're going to start to see it. We're starting to see it right now, my friends. Do not be a window a window licker. Do not be a lollipop sucker. Don't let these Swiss bastards take your money. All right, the Swiss are the scum of the earth. Uh, absolutely, they are real low life people, and um, don't let them don't let them make a penny um, off of you. So, my friends, uh, wait wait before buying. And by the way. If you're buying one of these used, what should you be looking for? Well, look, I've had I, I'm I'm pretty careful wearing a watch, and you know that, there's no way you can avoid these scratches. Now, the one thing, definitely for sure, if you're buying it used, pay attention to this bezel, the bezel. Uh, okay, if this is polished, the watch is ruined. Okay, by the way, this has never been polished. I'm wearing this for almost three years, I believe. Um, yeah, you you can't polish this bezel. All right. Uh, again, you have this kind of thing. So that sandblast, you see there's a little scratch but by that 40. That came, I, I kind of nicked it against a, a stucco wall, and that really just scratched direct. You don't want to have a scratch hit any of those numbers. But even this little scratch there, I mean, I, I don't think I can get it out. It, that's it. It's done because you got the sandblasting. I don't know if you send it to Rolex. Do they do it? Uh, I, but, you know, it's a special process with this, this bezel, so... You really, uh, you want to be careful with it, but uh, maybe the platinum version is better because it's a, it's a tougher platinum. The platinum bezel is a, is a harder material. So um, that might be a smart way to go. Uh, and also, you know, look, the brown, you know, I, I, I live, you know, right now I'm in the desert basically, right? I like brown. It's a good color. Um, I, you know, I like it's like a nice rich color. I also, you know, I usually wearing a dress shirt, you know, and you, I do, you know, I, I, I do need at least a two-tone watch. I need a little bit of gold because I'm usually wearing like, you know, French cuffs, you know, it's like a $500 custom shirt, you know, cuff links, you know, so, you know, I need something a little bit, just a little flashy, right? Because, you know, that's, that's the type of guy I am. Um, but in the summer, yeah, this watch doesn't, I don't think it looks that good. And I mean, mm, yes or no. I think the blue is the way to go, like almost like um, if you live at a place like a Miami or whatever, or, you know, L.A. maybe, uh, I think the blue dial is the way to go, especially uh, if you're under, let's say, the age of uh, 40, okay? If you're under 40, I would definitely get the blue dial. Uh, definitely not the gray dial. The gray dial is ugly. You want the blue dial, which has the red second hand. You want that red second hand. Um, on that blue dial, it's it's a stunner. Uh, it's a classic look. The gray is kind of like uh, again, it's for people with no taste. Um, so uh, the Rolex market is going to be coming down. Uh, you know, again, as you know, as as uh, my uh, nephew Kino has told me, the watch market is dead. Uh, don't be a window licker, a uh, lollipop sucker. Don't let these guys, you know, sell you a uh, story. 
uh, Rolex prices will be coming down hard, 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 hard. And uh, you, you don't want to be buying these things at retail. Absolutely not. I would wait till March, April and either demand a discount or you get this used uh, and don't pay, you know, again, the, even the blue dot, I would say, you know what, 10 grand, 10, five, 10, five is the right price for this one. 11, 11, five. Uh, and by the way, these got up to, I think about 20 grand. This model got up to about 20 grand. Now, last question I'm going to address. What about the one that's the, the rose gold, the full rose gold with the black uh, rubber bracelet, whatever they call it, the flex, the bl that black rubber bracelet. Um, that watch, the head of the watch is, you know, I think it's a beautiful head, you know, the, the rose gold, the black ceramic, but that black rubber strap is disgusting. I mean, uh, black as a black strap is just, again, you know, all my, all my watches, my dress watches, I, I think I only have, yeah, you know, most of them I have a, either a brown or a, other other colors. I do not wear black straps unless it's for a very formal watch. Um, so yeah, I think the black is a ugly, ugly, ugly color. If they had something else, I don't know, maybe white. Well, actually, no, I can't. I really can't do white, but um, it's uh, it's too um, you know, it's a little tacky. It's a little tacky unless you're like Iranian or something. You're like one of these Iranians in L.A., um, you know, you can wear the black um, rubber uh, rose gold. That actually, you can get away with it. Um, that's it. That Those are the only people who, who should be wearing it. Iranians in L.A. Uh, and specifically, if you have like two columns and lions in front of your house. Uh, also, Armenians can get away with it. So, Iranians and Armenians can get away with the black rubber strap. Uh, everybody else, uh, avoid that. And again, only Iranians who have the two giant columns, uh, in front of their house and also the lions, uh, then, uh, that is a, uh, that's the watch you need to get. Everybody else avoid that watch. Um, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Leave your nasty comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, because I could really use your help on those ad revenues. You know, I depend on your ad revenues, uh, to, uh, you know, to buy coffee. All right. Thank you. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below and click the like and subscribe button or the dislike and unsubscribe button, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat.